uh, West Virginia takes on the Cincinnati Bearcats at the Coliseum tomorrow night. Um, a game that we were hoping this year, obviously, would have been coached by Hugs. You know, his his all I, not his alma mater, were his alma mater, but his former employer versus uh, you know his I guess former employer. Um, yeah. So this game obviously doesn't have that spark. Um, that we once thought it did, but Hey, this, this could definitely be the start of kind of getting the local rivalry again. Uh, we talked about it with football um, and, and, and how we should be playing in the last game of the season, but looking forward to that Thursday night game, of course, but here we go. We got, we got them on the hardwood. Uh, Ryan, what can you tell us about this Cincinnati Bearcats team? Stop me. If you've heard this before, this is another good team in the big 12. Uh, you look at it, they're sitting at 30 in the net. Um, they're, they're, they're on the inside looking in at the tournament right now. So they're in a good position. They didn't shoot themselves in the non-con. Um, they're three and four in big 12 play, but if you look at it, they, they're, they're one and two on the road. And the two losses are to Baylor by three and at the fog by five and they won in Provo. So they've played well on the road. And the reason they've played well on the road is they, they play deep, they play good defense and they're athletic and they're physical and they really, really rebound. I mean, they absolutely pounded Kansas on the glass on Big Monday. To they could, if they had just made a couple jump shots, they probably would have won at the fog. So this is going to be another test. Um, Wes Miller's in year number three. They got, and like I said, they got good size. I'm glad that Jesse Edwards is healthy and, and ready to go for this game because they got guys in the front line. Um, whether it's uh, Victor Lacken or. Jamie Reynolds, uh, a lot of size up there. Aziz Bandago. Um, sorry if I'm mispronouncing a couple of these names. They have some funky names, but uh, really, really good size in the front court. Seven feet, six ten, six eleven. They looked apart. The they they, uh, they they got bigger. They got more athletic in this off season when they transitioned over from the American into the Big Twelve. So I'm uh, looking forward to this challenge. This is a game I think we should win, but it's also a good team. Yeah, so Cincinnati, they were a big question coming into this yeah. year, right? Is were they going to kind of play like this historic Cincinnati that you know we grew up watching, or were they kind of going to be that lackadaisical Cincinnati? And their non-con, um, obviously, losses to to Xavier and Dayton to in-state rivals, you know, tends to happen. But obviously, since then they've really turned it up. Their Big Twelve losses um, were against twenty-five Texas. That was in Cincinnati. I remember that game. That was seventy-four, seventy-three. Yep. Lost by a point there at 14 Baylor, only lost by three points, um, lost by four against Oklahoma. And as we you just talked about against Kansas, this is a team that does pretty decent on the road. They obviously do pretty decent at home, too. They're, they always bring it. They're ready to go. It's going to be a challenge here for, for the Mountaineers. But after losing two away games, one that should have definitely be won, we're now in a position where you have to win these next two home games, Ryan. So you you brought you talked about uh, Cincinnati, their size, their depth, um, their how good they are. Where does this West Virginia team attack Cincinnati? Um, so so they struggle to make shots. So I, I think if you can contain the balance and make them beat you over the top, um, we can have some success. They they are making seven threes, but they do shoot a lot of them. Um, so I, this is this is a game where. You got to be able to trust your discipline, and and like Houston, and we saw this last night against Texas. Sometimes Cincinnati's best shot is their second shot. So you got to be, you got to find these big guys, these athletes, and you got you got to box them out. If if we don't, it'll be like Oklahoma State and UCF where they keep possessions alive and they beat us at the, at at the end of the game. And Rush, you talked about it. you walk through their Big Twelve schedule beyond um, their road games. Their four losses are by a combined 13 points in league play. This, they could easily, they're sitting at three and four in league. They could easily be five and two, six and one. Um, and, and that's, they, they lost to Texas at the buzzer. The Oklahoma game was back and forth. So, yeah. and then I already talked about the Baylor and Kansas game. So this team is feeling good about themselves. They got a lot of confidence and they're probably looking at it. We're three and four in league play. We've played a hard schedule. We have not played. Um, West Virginia and Oklahoma State yet, who are the bottom two teams right now, and they're looking at this as a great spot to get back to 500. Compared to us, who were what we're two and five, and we're thinking, hey, we got two home games. If we can get these two, we get the four and five, and then we'll see what happens in the second half. So two teams that need a win. From Cincinnati's viewpoint, like I said, they're on the bubble. They're on the right side right now. 
But with where we're at in the net, they can't afford to lose a game like mm-hmm. this, no matter – even though we know our re- our talent and our roster currently, uh, the current status is way better than what the computers say we are. So uh, adding on to that, Ryan, after they play us, they're at 15 Texas Tech on Saturday. Then they play Houston, cool. then Iowa State, then they're at UCF um, from, from there. I mean, those next three games after us – is like you said, is you you could lose all three of those games and it not hurt you too bad. The game that would hurt would be obviously losing to us. And and so they're, you know, in theory going to bring it. We have sometimes seen the opposite side is where they're so, oh, our next three games are this. We're just going to Morgantown. They're not that yeah. good. You know, could sleepwalk through this. There's always that element as well. But this Cincinnati team, Ryan, if, if I, I could see them the way they're playing now. If they continue it, they could be that team where they kind of get that eight, nine seed in the tournament and knock off a number one seed and, and are in the sweet 16 where we, we've talked about this with, and we're kind of seeing it with Houston this year is you kind of get beat up in the big 12, but as long as you're able to handle it, respond well, play well, you get to March madness. And you know, it's like, Oh, well, we just, we already got the hard part out of the way we played in the big 12. We'll play any of these ACC or big 10 teams. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing compared to, to what we've been going through lately. So Cincinnati is definitely one of these teams that can do that. They can't drop a game like this in Morgantown, but we've talked about it from the West Virginia side. There's still pride on the line. There's still a lot of season left. There's still guys trying to compete, get things right. And you never know what happens come big 12 tournament time. And this is, this is a game where it's who cares more, who wants it more. And, and that that's what it's going to be the rest of the season. I, I understand Ryan. I think we've understand that we are in a position here to go four and five, go win your next two home games. And at least I think that's what we should aim for. At least go 500 in the big 12. That would be a huge accomplishment for this staff and these players with everything they face. And it's still very possible, but the, you can obviously no more slipping up. You have to understand your role that you're the spoiler and go out and spoil their day. Let's, let's win this game, Ryan. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're experienced too. I, I think we probably have maybe more individually talented players, but they've played together. They got, they got the benefit of a waiver before Raekwon. Um, That's right. And they, right. uh, Newman, uh, Frederick and and Day Day Thomas, so they they got they got a they got a good camaraderie there with those guards to compare or, or to pair up with their size and athleticism up front. So that's why they've been able to mesh things together. West Miller's doing a great job in year number three there. So going to be a great challenge. But like I said, this is a winnable game. I expect to win this game. You're at home. You're the desperate team. I know Cincinnati needs this game too, but we're the ones that's lost two in a row. They're coming off a big UCF win where they put it on UCF in the second half. So maybe they're feeling a little bit fat and happy coming in here. They're looking ahead to that stretch up coming. This is college basketball. This is exactly the same spot as the TCU game last year at home when they were feeling good. We were 0-5 and and we picked them off because we were ready to go. So I expect a similar game here where we jump on them and and hopefully we can hold on. So, and you're and how we do that is, is number one, we got to box out. And I, I keep talking about it. They out rebound their opponents by ten. They punk Kansas on the glass. They punk Baylor on the glass. If you don't hit them, they're going to dunk on you. And and nobody wants to get dunked on. So box out is key number one. Number two, and this is more macro, but also micro, is play inside out. And, and meaning Jesse's role is now going to expand more now that he's back in the fold officially. Get, get a mix of what we did well early, getting the ball to Jesse playing inside out, but also what we've been able to bring a little bit along here from the perimeter recently when we share the basketball. Now you have 10 guys. Nobody be selfish. You're going to get your FGAs. You're going to get you're going to get plenty of opportunities to score. Trust the offense. Trust the system. Share the ball. Score early, score late. And then number three, man, is everybody Everybody feels like crap. Nobody likes to lose. And And – especially when you give away a road game where you could have got to three and four, then you were looking at, Hey, we could go above 500 and big 12 play at home, but you got to stick together. It's a long season still. And you got, you got to treat February like it's a new month. And this will be the final day in January. And it's a great opportunity against another quality team to 
start some momentum in the month of February, and then we'll see what happens. I like, agree. You can't you can't just say, oh, we're we're seven and thirteen, the season's over. Yeah, that's not. You got guys that all those guys are playing for contracts next year. Everybody wants to go play pro. If you just lay down, you're not going to get picked up by anybody. So there's so much more to play for than just the NCAA tournament. Obviously, that is the end goal, but just game by game, man, and then see what happens. I'm with you. I, 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 you, you said something interesting earlier, and I think this is true that talent on this team has never been a concern. It's, it's the meshing of this talent. It's, it's the toughness, right? So yes. You get a couple extra fouls in there, but you're just grinding it out on the boards, making them suffer. Who cares? Honestly, who cares? It's like when Josh says, like, I'll sacrifice the shot clock if it means we're not hooking up stupid shots. Yes. I'll sacrifice some fouls and guys being in the bonus if it means you kind of slipped an elbow in there. You know, it, it, it's it's part of the game. You do what you got to do. And then people are saying in the chat, you're talking about it too, Ryan. It's no second chances. If they're they're going to get their shots. Thing, it's going to happen. But yeah. don't don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't let it. Because I think that's been that's been the main problem with this team. It's a lot of the times I don't feel like like the Oklahoma State game is a perfect example. I don't feel like they won that game. I feel like we lost it, and that's yeah. our biggest problem. So start playing for pride. Get 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 you know warmed up. Get something going um, for March, and great things can happen. Oh. Shout Jeff, Jeff, appreciate it, brother. Jeff, thank you so much. He's back again. Jeff, you're the man. We appreciate you. Hoping for a W in Morgantown on Wednesday in, in <laughs> day for for the YouTube audience who can see it's. <laughs> hey, let's Double do Wednesday. it. Yeah, I'm all for it. I'll call it whatever day of the week, Jeff. Uh, if we if we get this yeah. W, but I, I like the W for Wednesday there.